Hello everybody. As you know, in the last two weeks I made videos on two different right list alt history YouTubers, which was very depressing and bad for my mental health. So this week I decided to do something different. I decided to play all the way through Minecraft on stream, it took about 9 hours, and while I was playing a game which I've played for almost a decade now, I began to look at it differently. I thought about the mechanics and the way players interact with them, the subtle ways the game manipulates you to do certain things as intended by the developers. In this video we will take a very serious look at all these things. Yes, it's Marxist analysis of Minecraft time. If you never watched one of my Marxist analysis videos then consider yourself lucky, this video is going to be great. As we all know, Minecraft was released in 2011 and it is the most sold game ever with over 230 million copies sold and that does not count the people who play on cracked clients. Minecraft was originally developed by this guy who goes by Notch. He eventually sold the whole company to Microsoft but most of the development team is still the same. Notch has since turned out to be a massive asshole as evidenced by his Twitter behavior. He made 2.5 billion from selling the game and still has nothing better to do than to fuck around on Twitter. The rich truly are just like us. In this video we will analyze the vision of Minecraft, the very thing it is intended to make us think about. As such, some of the things I will mention were made by Notch and some by the Microsoft control team. For the sake of simplification, I will not distinguish between who added what feature. It's about looking at the whole experience and the intended message which I will extrapolate from it. So, to play Minecraft you start off making a new world. First thing the game tells you to do is to break some trees with your bare hands. As you do. Then you make a crafting table and learn how to make a pickaxe. So you do the obvious thing and use the pickaxe to dig down. And will you look at that, now you have stone and can make an even better pickaxe and even an axe to harvest more trees. So you get going building a nice house to stay in for the start. But eventually it becomes night and a zombie shows up and kills you. This is the first time the game is nudging you into a certain direction. We learn that this game is not all fun and building houses. There are threats. So you craft a sword to fight back. But then you encounter a skeleton which kills you at a distance. So you craft a shield. So, so far the game has taught us three things. Break trees to get material. Mine to make better equipment. And be vigilant and carry a sword. Now we find a new problem. We're hungry. We need food. The trees we farmed dropped a couple of apples but that's not nearly enough. So now the player has hunger and a sword. So you do the obvious thing and exterminate the entire local wildlife. Pigs, sheep, cow, all are slaughtered by the player to be eaten. Of course alternatively the player could get food from villages. So it's either killing lots of innocent animals or stealing from equally innocent villagers. After gathering food we go back to the second thing the game taught us. Mine to get better resources. We mine for iron, gold and diamonds. Eventually we make armor and get enough diamonds for a pickaxe. So we gather obsidian for an enchanter and a portal. We take a bit of care of our food situation now. I built a farm for wheat, carrots and potatoes and built this extremely humane habitat for cows and sheep. Peter would be proud of me. This is also very important because we need to harvest the skin of the cows for later. We must keep growing more cows to get all their skin. The portal I made from obsidian brings us to another dimension. A very uninhabitable one called the nether. And by now you probably wonder what the hell I'm trying to achieve in this playthrough. Besides playing minecraft for two days straight and pretending it's important for my job. And the honest answer is I want to beat the game by killing the end boss. And for those not familiar with minecraft, to kill the boss you need to get into a dimension called the end. And to open a portal to get there you need blaze rods and ender pearls. Blazes are these flying things that spawn in the nether and endermen are these 3 meter tall guys who are probably a racist metaphor by notch. Uh, let's spend a second on this. The enderman is a large black figure who gets aggressive and tries to harm you for looking at it. And it also steals your blocks. This is not the only mob that can be interpreted as a racist stereotype. The villagers themselves too. 
They live in deserts, have temples where they worship one god. They have huge noses and are very greedy, as evidenced by their trade prices. And they're protected by a literal golem. Uh, so basically, we have two very racist stereotypes in a game. But let's not think about it too hard, because that would be uncomfortable. Anyways, to get to the end portal and beat the game, you must kill many blazes and endermen. So I did. After finding a fortress, I collected all the blaze rods I would need. Unfortunately, endermen are harder to find. But do not despair, there is another way to get the pearls. And that is to give gold to these fellas here, who relentlessly try to eat your face skin until you give them some gold. There is a chance that they will give you ender pearls. This is important for speedruns, and if you heard about the whole dream stream cheating thing, Basically, what he did was modify the game so these guys would give him more pearls, which I can understand because they wanted a frustratingly large amount of gold to give me the damn pearls. After getting the pearls I wanted, I went and found the end dungeon and activated the portal. On the other side was the ender dragon, the final boss of the game, and it was really easy to defeat. Yay me, I win, but there is more to do than to beat the dragon. It's an open world game, you keep playing on. And in Minecraft, since a couple of versions, you can fly. You just need some wings. And these wings only spawn in the end, and you can only get them after killing the dragon. So my next task was to find one of these end cities and get some wings. After I got them, I flew back home to my house. Oh, will you look at that? I have 69 levels. I better enchant some stuff. Enchantments improve your gear in specific ways. For example, Unbreaking 3 will quadruple the lifetime of your items. Now that I enchanted all this stuff, I'm ready to get into the end game and build whatever I want to. But actually not. As you can see, my wings are almost broken already. You can repair them using the skin of the flying manta rays, but that gets more expensive over time. The truly optimal way to do it is to get mending. That is an enchantment that repairs items when you collect experience points. The only issue is that it does not spawn naturally anywhere, and you can't get it from enchanting books yourself. Instead, you need to trade it from a villager. As mentioned before, villagers are these NPCs that inhabit full cities. And they do work, they have different jobs, and they trade with you, and there's a chance that one of them will sell you the valuable mending book. So, naturally, I did what every player would do and created a so-called villager breeder, with two villagers spending the rest of their existence in this funnel making babies that just drop out of sight. Then we take those babies and we put them into what's called a trading hall, where they spend the rest of their existence in a one-by-one -one enclosure. No bed, no food, only a workstation and the occasional trade with me. Of course, you can breed villagers who roam free, and you can trade with villagers who are not in a trading hall, but that is inconvenient, so nobody does it. Can you imagine how long it would take to find a specific villager out of 30? Impossible. Sadly, the villager which sells mending has a really high price. Here's the thing. Villagers can be killed by zombies, the same mob that killed us at the start. And then the villagers become zombie villagers. And you, as a player, can take zombie villagers and heal them so they're villagers again. And they're so thankful that they reduce their prices. So naturally, I deliberately had a zombie infect my villagers so I could heal them and they would give me mending for cheap. And it worked. Only one more issue. I have mending on my wings, but I still need experience points to repair it. So I went to the end and made a platform for endermen to spawn on. I put an animal in the middle, which endermen don't like, so they drop down the chute to the place I'm waiting at with exactly one health point left, so I can kill them all with one sword swing. At this point, I can enchant any tool with the best boosts, provided I wait for long enough. From this point on, I'm in the endgame. I can do whatever I want in this world. Though, ironically enough, lots of people lose interest at this point, since the game does not tell you what to do from this point on. We more or less started the endgame and are free to build anything now which is where we will leave the playthrough. In 1961, a professor in Yale performed one of the earliest psychological experiments. It was called the Milgram, or sometimes the Obedience, experiment. The big question was, would normal average people harm others when urged by a man in a lab coat? 
The experiment was held with the background of Adolf Eichmann's trial. Eichmann was the Nazi official who was called the architect of the Holocaust. He organized the death machine. He wrote the train schedules. He provided the camps with Cyclone B. He was directly and indirectly responsible for millions of deaths. And what did he say in his defense? He said he was only following orders. Ever since the Nuremberg trials, people around the world tried to understand how an entire people, tens of millions of Germans, could just follow fascism and support, or at least allow, for the Holocaust to happen. The theory at the time was that there was something about the German character, something weird with the German people which allowed one tyrant to rise after another, Bismarck, Kaiser Wilhelm and then Hitler. It could happen in Germany, but it would for sure not happen anywhere else. Right? So Milgram made an experiment about that. Basically, the volunteers were told that they're testing if pain is as good a motivator for learning as rewards are. So two volunteers would pull straws and the one with the short straw would have to remember word pairs. When they got the pairs wrong, the other one would administer electric shocks, starting at 5 volt and moving up to 450 volt. Now, if you are an electrician or someone who likes to play around with electronics, you may know that 5 volts is painful but okay, and 450 volts are almost a short death. As little as 50 volts can kill depending on where the current goes. So the volunteers went about their work. One would try to remember the word pairs and eventually get it wrong, and the other would slowly increase the voltage with which they shocked the one called the student. And they knew it was working because the cries and screams were louder with every new shock. Eventually, almost all of the people operating the shock machine turned to the researchers and asked to stop this. But they were verbally urged to continue. Eventually, after a certain point, the student would not react to being shocked anymore. There was just complete silence. And about 60% of the test subjects still gave them the final shock even though they had become unresponsive. In effect, 60% of American people aged 20 to 50 followed the orders of the scientists to the point they killed the other volunteer. Or they would have if this whole thing was for serious. Because, as you probably already know, the experiment was a ruse. The volunteer that was supposedly shocked was instead a paid actor who was pretending to get shocked. The switches were connected to nothing. The true test subject was the person with the switches. They wanted to see how far average people would go when being pushed by an authority figure. Very far it turned out. No psychologist expected that result. Most assumed that people would be too good to go above 40 volt shocks. The scientists had faith in humanity. That was their mistake. Eventually, the conclusion was that anyone could become a Nazi prison guard. There was nothing bad about the German character specifically. Americans would have acted the same. And this experiment was repeated around the world, and all those repeat studies came to similar conclusions. About 60% of people would obey authority, even if it means hurting innocent people. Most people leave it at that and give a stern warning like, and that is why we must remain vigilant and not allow fascistic elements in our society to take power. It could happen here, so let's make sure it won't. And that is a very important point, and it's definitely true. But I would like to look at an easily overlooked part of the experiment. And that is the test subjects. They now knew that if a cable was connected, they would have killed someone. Just because a person in a coat told them to. This, of course, could severely mess people up psychologically. They now know that they would have followed orders to kill. But a couple years after the experiment, Dr. Milgram checked up on the subject and over 90% of them said that they are glad they were in the experiment. They had learned that they could have killed someone. And from this they learned to question authority, not to blindly follow a guy in a lab coat. They learned to do their own thinking about what is best for them and everyone. Experiencing which horrible things they were able to do was what taught them that they can have choices not to act like this. And now I try to tie this all back into Minecraft. I'm going to tell you my conclusion and then try to support it. Minecraft is an individual Milgram experiment for all of its players. The purpose of Minecraft is to force you to do god-awful things which violate your moral code to make you question your own inner values and teach you that you have a choice not to be like that. 
Minecraft shapes the way you play it in deliberate and non-deliberate ways. And almost all of these ways are morally questionable. Sure, a player can be vegan and only eat plants, but in the early game, killing peaceful animals and stealing from innocent villagers is easier. It is possible to build cow and sheep farms in ways that don't compact them like this. As a matter of fact, there is an in-game feature to discourage you from torturing cows like this. Entity cramming. If you have too many cows in one tiny cage, they will literally start to squish each other to death. Yet still, every Minecraft player makes the smallest possible fenced-in area. Because that is easier, takes less wood and time. And in the end, you just kill and eat the cows anyways. Doesn't matter what their existence is like. A very similar thing happens to the villagers. They're put in breeding apparatuses, balancing on top of a piece of fence for their entire existence to make child after child, which is immediately taken away from them. And that child is then put into a tiny chamber it can never leave, where it is forced to trade with the player and occasionally be turned into a zombie because the player feels like it. There is a video on YouTube explaining that this element of Minecraft is imperialist. You are effectively a foreigner in the Minecraft world and you immediately go about shaping it your way, eating the wildlife, plundering the villagers and dare I say, enslaving the villagers. Likewise, the player does many horrible things to track down and defeat the dragon in the end to make farms for experience points. The Enderman farm I told you about is only one example they spawn and die within 8 seconds. They only exist because the way we built the farm. And worst of all, Endermen are pacifists. They do not attack the player without a reason. Much like the cows, we're exploiting and torturing other beings for our immediate profit. Of course it is a video game. I'm not saying anyone is a bad person for mistreating the NPCs in game. After all, I did the same in my playthrough. It is a game. But I do genuinely believe that this design must be on purpose. Minecraft wants to put you in the situation in which you begin to question your own actions, the same way that the subjects of the Milgram experience began to change their life to question authority a lot more. Minecraft is trying to teach you that you are capable of great evil when nudged that way by a game design. You are supposed to question it, question why you torture the cows, the villagers and the endermen. And ultimately, you should ask yourself, if I get into a real life situation in which I am nudged to act in a way to harm others, will I do it or resist? The things the player does in the average Minecraft playthrough could be described as anything from fascist to Stalinist. In total, the player is totalitarian, a self-proclaimed superior being that steals the resources from the land, enslaves the beings that inhabit it and kills the ones that are not useful only to then use them in complicated torture chambers to breed more and deliberately infect them with the zombie virus. Minecraft teaches you that in the right environment, you could be a monster, a fascist. And since the game makes you think about that, you actually realize the danger of falling for such things. And you learn, and you become a far more effective anti-fascist after learning this. Minecraft is an anti-fascist masterpiece. It shows you your own ugly sides via deliberate game design, which can and will ultimately lead you to not only question Minecraft's design philosophy, but all authority, be it a video game producer, a politician or a cop. Down with authority, long live the people. So in conclusion, all of these game design pieces were deliberately made to push the players out of their comfort zone in order to strengthen the anti-fascist feelings all of us feel inside. It is incredible how 230 million people played this game so far and nobody has figured out the secret anti-fascist message. But that's what you have me for. I make videos on leftist topics on a weekly basis and I always have something to teach you. So remember to like and share if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you want more videos like this one. And if you're willing to dare give me a sub, then, you know, hit that button. I would like to thank all of you for your lovely support, especially my patrons who make it possible for me to make videos full time. And I would like to especially thank Autumn Keasley, Theon Hartley, Alan Vaux, Eric Betts, V, Zander Corvus, Tusnek, Attila Nemetz, Bottom Bitch Lina, Carissa, Daniel Hyman, Dominic Cusanelli, Emily Margot Klassen, Evie Wren, Herdina, Herdina, Ian Snyder, Kevin Sanders, Klaustrup, Lazy Panda 234, 
Liam S, Nana Pema, Raman Deville, Retro Trooper, Sarah, Sean Murphy, Stemma Sushef, and Taran Gillilin Jr. <laughs>